New house, new project, and you already know we got to start with the nursery because, you know, that one's a little time sensitive. All right, so we're ready to get started. So big picture here, we want an archway over here on this left wall and then a board and batten wall on the back with some wallpaper up above it. So let's get started with the arch. I just took some string, nailed it to the wall and made a pencil line with my arch up top. And then I use my laser level to make my straight lines going down the side and just put some painter's tape. That way I'll have a clean line when I go and paint. Next up was plastic for the floor because let's face it, I'm a messy painter and I'm gonna get paint everywhere. Give the walls a quick sand so that new paint has something to adhere to. And I went ahead and did the cutting in while the wife did the rolling. Tip here for cutting in is have a good paintbrush. I used to treat my paintbrushes like they were one time use and now I don't, so you shouldn't either. I mean, look at those lines. On to my favorite part of painting, which is peeling off the painter's tape. Just make sure you do it while it's wet and you'll have a nice crisp line. Quick guest appearance by the wife. She's working behind the scenes, all right? First night was a success. Got all the walls painted, two coats, and then it was on to the board and batten for the next day. The only obstacle I had on this wall was that outlet. So I went ahead and put the outlet cover back on and then set my laser up and tried to set it up where I wouldn't have any super uneven spacing between the boards. But a little bit off here and there, nobody's gonna notice unless you're some master carpenter like my dad, he'll probably call me out. So I'm over there working and does anybody else's DIY projects with their wife go like this? While she's in there finishing her dance session, I went ahead and got started at the bottom and worked my way up the wall. I started with this quarter round. I flipped it over and made the one of the flat sides up. So that way my board and batten would have something to rest on and not look awkward sitting on top of my baseboard. There's other options for this. If you have baseboard with a flat top, that could work. You could remove that baseboard and replace it with different baseboard. This just seemed like the easiest option to me. If you don't like it, you don't like it. So I'm gonna take a quick second here and plug this laser that I got from Amazon. I'm not sponsored. They did send me this laser for free and it is pretty solid. So if you're hunting for a laser, this one should definitely be in the running. It's affordable. It's a stupid bright green three plane laser. And if you're worried about the quality because you've never heard of Dovo before, it has a five year accuracy guarantee. So don't worry about that. It comes with a hard carry case, which I'm a sucker for. The only downfall is it doesn't come with a tripod, which you pretty much need for a laser, but I'll have a link down in the description if you're interested. Back to the project. I'm just using construction adhesive for these boards and I'm just putting some pin nails in there to hold them in place until that construction adhesive sets up. So funny story here, somehow I managed to put the very first board on high. So luckily when I was done, I was looked back with my laser and that was the only one that was out. So. Took my multi-tool, trimmed that one down so that top board can sit on there flush with the All right, we're back in business. So now it's time for the top piece. Same thing, just putting some construction adhesive on there and pinning it in place. Starting to come together here. Came back, used some wood filler, filled all of our nail holes, then used some caulk against all the boards in between the board and the wall to make it seem seamless. Hint here, get a dripless caulk gun. I got a cheap one and it, all it does is piss me off every time I use it. We wanted a little extra for this wall, so we got a one by two piece. And we're just gonna stick it right on top of that board and batten. Once we got our wood filler sanded down, just gave it a quick paint that was already primed and we're just painting it the same color the wall was previously. I like to cut in first and then have the wife roll over so it hides all of my brush marks. Did some quick cleanup and then we had to wait for the wallpaper to come in so we went ahead and put all the stuff in our way. It's a pretty small room so fitting a chair, a dresser, and a crib in there was a little tough. Wallpaper finally came in from Rocky Mountain Decal. Awesome customer service. We placed an order. I don't know if it looked odd to them or what, but they reached out and asked us for the dimensions of our project 
and they corrected our order since it is a non-repeating pattern. Uh, you don't order one full roll, you all order multiple sets so it all can cohesively fit together. This wallpaper is super easy. It's just a peel and stick. So you wanna leave excess on top, bottom, and sides to trim off later. That'll be especially important if your ceilings or wall are out of square just a little bit. You'll have that extra bit of wallpaper to fill in that gap. All the sheets are numbered one through five in our case, so you can't screw up the pattern, and the number is at the top, so you don't get it flipped upside down. The last piece was the only piece that was really tricky to trim because it runs into a three-way corner between the top of the board and batten and then the two walls, but I ended up having to trim it a little bit so I could get it folded, and then I just trimmed the rest of it. Make sure you have a sharp blade because this wallpaper is actually pretty thick. Then it was on to the final touches. The wife did some decorating. I worked on my sick transitions. I know I got some work to do. And here's the final product. Next up, guest bedroom slash office.